I love spring. Except for the pollen, I love spring. Spring is a time of new beginnings. Couples who have gone through bitterness and harshness and, and being judgmental at each other and, and at each other's throat and arguing for everything and cannot come to a conclusion, sometimes come to the point where they come to a point of new beginnings. And they say to themselves, you know, whatever we did, it did not work, but we need a new start. We need a fresh start. And they're willing to change. And, and that is the time. It's a season of spring when they finally come to the conclusion, hey, this, you know, my husband, he has flaws, but he's better than other guys out there. My wife, she's got flaws, but she's better than other girls out there. You know, we're going to make this marriage work. And if they hang in there, they come to this point of spring. And during spring times, couples are more tender, more open, more caring. And it's, it's a time of new beginning. The flowers are blooming. The streams of communication are flowing. No more arguing. No more fighting. No more blaming. No more talking about your mother-in-law. No more talking about the, the burnt uh, uh, spaghetti. And, and there is a sense of excitement about life together again. And couples are making plans. They have great hopes for the future. They are planting seeds from which they hope to harvest one day. If we hang in there, spring is coming. Somebody says spring is coming. Hallelujah. In your marriage, spring is coming. In your family life, spring is coming. Hallelujah. The second honeymoon is about to come. Come on now, don't be shy. Say that to your spouse. The second honeymoon is about to come. Wow, you guys are too religious. <laughs> but be careful. Be careful. Because spring is the time for weeds to spread. When we think everything is going great, when we finally put away our winter jacket, put away our boots, you turn on the radio and they say, you're going to have another 12 centimeters of snow in April 31st. Come on! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, till May, there you go, there you go. You never know. Even in spring, you got to be careful. Even in spring, things can go wrong. Even in spring, those little bad habits that we don't pay attention to, you know, that little small little weed that's growing that you think, oh, I'll just take care of it. Soon enough, it's going to be a big weed plant that's in, your, in the middle of your lawn. And no matter how many times you use a lawnmower to cut over it, it keeps growing because you haven't pulled it out. So even in springtime, when things are going great, when couples, couples are open and, and talking, we got to pay attention to those weeds that start to grow in our marriages. But after spring, summer, my most favorite season of all is summer. Summer is a time of harvest. All the pain, you know the song we sang today, uh, being broken and, and uh, crushed to make new wine? That is so appropriate. It's a season of overflowing joy. It is a season of harvesting. It's a season where our kids have graduated and have left the house. Somebody say amen to that. <laughs> amen. Not that we are asking you to leave soon. <laughs> That's not what I mean. What I mean by summer is it's a time where we can actually enjoy our marriage. It is why we got married in the first place. We can actually rejoice. We can be happy in each other's company. We can say, you know what? This is great. This is like heaven. I wish everybody would have a marriage like this. That's the kind of feeling that you get in summer. During summer, couples are more committed, more united, more intimate, more purposeful, more complementary, and they're more mature. They're more mature. Who are mature people? I want you to really pay attention to this. Mature people are those who moderate their emotions with reason. 
guide it with truth and move it towards constructive action. What did I say? Moderate their re emotions with reason. We all have emotions. There's fear, there's anger, there's insecurity, there's anxiety. All sorts of emotions play in our life. But as you mature, you don't let those emotions control you anymore, but you sort of moderate it with reason. You're able to control or, or moderate your emotions with reason, guide it with truth and move it towards constructive action. You take the same emotion that is so painful and you moderate it and you actually are used able to use it with the truth of God and in a purposeful way in order to have victory in your life. That is maturity, my friends. And when I, me and my wife, we got married, we loved each other, but guess what? We lacked maturity. Every little feeling, we got offended. Every little thing was a big problem. Either I didn't talk for a few days or she didn't talk for a few days or we gave each other silent treatment or, or we were uh, arguing or we were cynical and we did all those things. Why? Because we were not matured in our relationship. We were not mature as human beings and, and it took some time in order for us to mature in our relationships, in our, in, our, in, our, in our emotions and the way we see things and the way we handle things. It took us some time. We got to know how to mature in our Christian walk. It's a time of being complimentary to each other. It's a time of hugs and kisses. It's a time of warmth. It's a time of love. Couples can get to this point in their marriage. Do you believe that? It may look like July is never coming, but July is coming. Hallelujah. July is coming. A great time in your marriage is coming. A great time in your family is coming. Learn to be complimentary. Understand each other's love language. If your spouse likes gifts, then give gifts. I personally don't really enjoy gifts that much. If your sp a spouse is, is, uh, uh, enjoys uh, verbal uh, affirmation, give them verbal affirmation. If they like physical touch, give them physical touch. Whatever your spouse wants, give it to them. Don't say, I love her. She just never knows that I love her. <laughs> you're, you're giving love in your language, not in her language. If you can just do that, it's going to be so much better. Your, your marriage is going to change. Your family will be fun again. Hallelujah. Amen. I read somewhere that guys who kiss their wife at least once a day live longer. <laughs> so... Okay, we're still getting used to everything, right? <laughs> so, I don't kiss my wife every day. But, once in a while, once every 30 days, let's say. <laughs> on the same day, I'll give her 30 kisses. <laughs> and I'll say, this is averaged out. I'm going to live a long life. <laughs> And she just looks at me. <laughs> so I knew I was going to use that at Family Can Be Fun series. <laughs> but that's the time of summer when 30 kisses just seems easy. But when you're in winter time, every kiss is painful. Every hug is painful. But friends, I want you to believe that God can do great things in your life. Finally, I want to finish. I know I'm taking a lot of time. The fourth season is a season called fall. It's a season called fall. Summer was beautiful, everything is great, but by fall, those weeds I talked about have really grown up. Jesus said, in this world you will have trouble. In this world you will have trouble. Every family 
no matter how experienced we are and no matter how good things are going, those weeds have also been growing. Things also suddenly pop up and suddenly an event takes place in our life. And, and our mother-in-law who said she'll only be here for a weekend has now stayed over for two months. And, and <laughs> you know, and, and pastor now starts a series called Family Can Be Fun, just digging up old things and you know, unexpected things happen. Unexpected things happen. And how you negotiate these problems determines whether you go back to spring or go back to winter. You don't always have to go back to winter. You don't always go back to problems. But it all depends on how you negotiate your problems. How you deal with this latest crisis? Somebody loses a job. How are you going to deal with that crisis? Many families can collapse again. But as you mature, as you invest in each other, as you grow together, if you learn how to negotiate these crises that come in your life, instead of going back to winter, you can go back to spring. There can be a new beginning, even in the midst of failure. There can be new beginnings, even in the midst of troubles in our life. Amen. Friends, we don't have to repeat the same pattern again and again and again and again. Today can be a new day. This can be a new beginning. I've sent uh, some notes to all our small group leaders and uh, just to teach them to look for some signs and uh, some keywords as to see whether you are right now in winter, whether you are in summer, whether you're in spring, whether you're in fall. Do the right assessment. If you do the right assessment and you realize where you truly are, you can have help in your marriage and family can be fun. Amen? Next week, we'll go back to uh, the wedding at Cana and we'll look at it more detail and we'll learn some more lessons for our marriages. Amen? All right, let's pray. Loving Father, we just thank you. Thank you for this... Uh, Family Can Be Fun series. We've been talking about this for the past 10 years of God. And uh, I know, I don't want to be naive to think that just because we do these series that all of a sudden all our families are going to be great. We know that things can be difficult. We know that even the best of them struggle. And even the most God-fearing, God-loving families can struggle. But Lord, this, this day, I just pray your blessing upon them. Whatever they've gone through in the past, I pray, Lord, that it'll go, it'll be just part of winter, but this will be a season of new beginnings, that this will be a season of spring in their life, that, Lord, from now on, they won't look back to the old ways, to the past ways, and and live in that regret and that self-pity and the same condemnation and the same shame. But God, I pray that they go into this new season of joy and hope and, and tenderness towards each other. I pray, Lord, that uh, in this environment, that our children, there are families here that maybe it's not husband and wife, maybe it's a single parent. But Lord, even in those families, I pray that there will be understanding, joy, love, and happiness, and a knowledge that they are no inferior than anybody else.